Illinois' best source for news and weather. WAND News at 4. What's really realistic when it comes to setting exercise goals? Why government guidelines are outdated and what you should really be striving for when it comes to working out. Plus, the bizarre workout from the early 90s, it's back and it's going viral. Those stories and more today on First News at 4. But first, a look at your top stories. A massive fire burned a Decatur warehouse to the ground overnight. We were the first to bring you pictures last night on WAND News. WAND's Maryam Manko and Doug Wolf start our team coverage out there again this afternoon. Well, you know, this building behind us uh, was actually kind of a two part building and uh, it spread very, very quickly. It was one of the fastest fires we had seen when you went live at six right. o'clock. Half the building was on fire and the second part had already caught fire. Yeah, the second half of the building actually just had smoke out of, coming out of the windows. It wasn't burning like the other half, but it quickly spread. And Marianne, this is one of the biggest fires that we've seen here in recent years. In fact, 50 to 60 firefighters were needed to fight this fire in Decatur last night. This massive warehouse that runs a full city block, total loss reduced to a pile of bricks. Homes which had been briefly evacuated. As flames and debris threatened to ignite them, the people have returned home. Five aerial trucks, seven to eight engines, along with firefighting assistance from the Hickory Point and Mount Zion Fire Departments. Firefighters responded shortly after four o'clock Wednesday afternoon. They're still here 24 hours later, pouring water on hot spots. Amazingly, only one minor injury to a fireman who possibly in injured a rotator cuff, a huge fire that used all of the city's resources. And Marianne, you and I were talking off the air. Very lucky. This is January. A couple weeks ago, we had single digits. A right. year ago, we had below zero. If this water had frozen, firemen would have been getting hurt on the ice. The equipment would have been freezing up. This could have been a lot worse. And we're very fortunate that we did have the weather that we had. In fact, just a week and a half, two weeks ago, we brought you amazing video of a, a similar fire where everything froze up and then yeah. uh, firemen have to worry about hypothermia. So it could have been much worse. Really count your blessings that nobody was really hurt Absolutely. and they're still able to work on this fire. We're going to have a little bit more for you coming up at five and six. Stacy, back to you. Okay, thank you. Well, in other news, Illinois public schools are short on cash. Now the Illinois State Board of Education is asking for more than $700 million for the fiscal year 2016. The board says schools have been shortchanged on money for the past several years and many are struggling to get by. Officials say even with the increase, the inflation adjusted budget would still be less than in 2009. Well, February will be here in just over a week, and that's the last month to visit the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum for free. To celebrate the 150th anniversary of the Civil War's end and Lincoln's death, admission for students is free through next month. But if you still can't make it, March admission will be discounted to $4. Now, first weather from Storm Center 17, home of the exclusive O'Brien Auto Park Urbana Storm Runner. Chief Meteorologist J.C. Foltz joins us now with the first look at our weather forecast. J.C., you know what? It doesn't look pretty out there, but no. hey, at least it's warm for it, January. It, it's warmer for January, but it's kind of that dampness to that air makes it feel a little bit cooler. I did see cooler. like a little white something. Yeah, there's a couple once, little so very well. fine flurries every once. So I was pulling on my driveway. Yeah. Wait a second. I stopped. I was like, did I see what I thought? <laughs> I, yeah, that's what it is out there. And you can see it's just kind of a gloomy evening in downtown Decatur or Poe Cadillac Buick. GMC of Forsyth Tower Cam. These clouds, they are stuck in place. The moisture not being allowed to mix out because we've got what we call an inversion in place and it's traps that moisture in. But eventually we're going to start to see the moisture getting out here as we head overnight and into early tomorrow morning. Satellite radar in motion shows those clouds continuing to be firmly entrenched across central Illinois. But notice back across Missouri, we are seeing a little bit of clearing and that clearing will work its way in our direction. Temperatures remain in the mid 30s pretty much area wide with upper 30s right now in Vandalia. For the rest of this evening, a cloudy sky and then eventually after midnight becoming partly cloudy with temperatures dropping back into the upper 20s. Coming up, we do have a little rain and some snow back in the forecast. I'll let you know when that arrives in just a little bit. When your kid asks for a tablet for school, you may want to think twice before saying no. A research team at the University of Illinois says tablets are great for education. According to the study, the use of a tablet increased student engagement and learning. The study also noticed it helps students lighten their backpacks as 
they didn't have to carry as many books. Meantime, a chemical hazard has prompted the recall of some household cleaners and degreaser products. CR Brands is recalling more than 83,000 mean green super and industrial strength cleaners and degreasers. The products are labeled does not contain ammonia, but they actually do contain ammonia. Family Dollar shareholders approved the company's sale to rival Dollar Tree. Family Dollar rejected a larger bid by Dollar General because of concerns about closing thousands of stores. It's a more than, excuse us, than $8 billion merger that, if approved by the Federal Trade Commission, will make the combined company the largest small former format rather value retailer in North America. Well, a new plus size clothing brand is coming. <laughs> Excuse oh, I'm blaming Dom well, for I this. I haven't done that <laughs> ever. Walking into our screen. Okay, well, we'll continue. A new plus size um, uh, line is coming to a Target store near you. The new line, Ava and Viv, is getting some promotional help from these three plus size fashion bloggers who got a sneak peek at the line. Target currently offers women's sizes up to 18 and has criticized for not offering larger sizes. The new line will roll out in some stores beginning next month. Therapy animals are nothing new, but what about a therapy llama? Meet this caring critter who's taking the edge of uh, some finals time at one school. They're taking the edge off of it. Okay, so I was so worried about getting <laughs> here in time. <laughs> Actually, wait a minute. I apologize. This is not, yes, wow, sorry. We never I use have, it on I, camera no, and we both I, did. And well, Oh, okay. That stuff blooper tapes are made up. Sorry. Yes. So, right. yeah. Well, this She's is something back. to laugh at. <laughs> uh, a clip of a VHS workout video from the 90s has been circling Facebook and it's getting quite the laugh. It is. Take a look. I mean, right there. This is Greer <laughs> Childer's Body Flex. It isn't a huge aerobic <laughs> workout. <laughs> That's called the that. lion. It's all about breathing and pulling your face to look younger or stay looking young. Well, these poses have names like the lion, as Dawn just mentioned. The videos are still for sale on the internet, and if you do a little research, you'll see Greer herself. She looks young for her age. Okay, so, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> It's almost as funny as me walking in. It is. It's so close. Thank but, goodness it wasn't a serious story. No kidding. But let's talk about the fact that my mom bought these videos <laughs> and she actually has them and showed them to me and did them. And so when I saw this on Facebook, I called her and laughed to the point of tears. Because. <laughs> Well, and if yeah. you listen, you can hear her, hear her like go, the way yeah. she puffs out the breath. It's all about getting us. Yeah, we've been having fun on YouTube today. Oh goodness, we'll be right back. <laughs> Illinois' best source for news and weather. W A N D News at four. In today's checkup, new research suggests the current physical activity guideline of 150 minutes a week is unrealistic. Instead, focusing on small increases in daily exercise would be more beneficial. Recent studies have shown just one hour of exercise a week is better than none at all, and a brisk 20-minute walk each day can reduce the risk of premature death by 23%. All right, you may have heard of dogs or cats being used as therapy, but what about llamas? Kathy Marshall met a 250 pound visitor strolling the halls of a middle school to ease the stress of finals. His full name is Rumpel Teaser, but we call him Teaser. Teaser treks through the halls of Valley Catholic Middle School. He's a trained llama. His visit planned to surprise and soothe students on their first ever day of finals. It's really overwhelming, so it's nice to actually have something that take our minds off of it. Teaser comes from Hidden Oak Ranch. They're very calming. They're very curious. They're just very safe for kids to be around. He and two others owned by Sherry Tallman are frequent visitors to schools. A 30 minute stop like today's costs about $100. So when the counselor suggested we bring in the therapy llamas after they went to um, our nursing home and it was such a big hit, we thought it would be a really good idea. I love to hug him and it makes me a little bit less stressed. The students asked some common questions like, do llamas spit? The answer, yes, but usually at each other. It's so fluffy. It's so, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, is pretty, it is pretty fluffy. <laughs> it is pretty fluffy, I have to admit. <laughs> it's funny because you don't normally see a llama at, like, at school and like in the cafeteria. And teaser's not the only stress reliever students will see this week. Even in the classrooms while they're taking tests, uh, we will have uh, aromatherapy 
diffusers in the room with lavender to kind of help create the best test taking environment. The smiling faces will surely turn more serious at test time, but it's clear Teaser has passed his test at Valley Catholic, standing tall through all the petting and picture taking. We're happy right now because there's a llama, and so maybe we'll be happy when we take our final. He's very cute. Yeah, so cool. those are awesome animals. You said they're, they're your favorite. They're one of my favorite animals. Yeah. Okay. And, and I don't know what it is, but they spit cool. a lot. That's what I think. They're of. trained. They're okay. Yeah. They're not camels that much. There you go. <laughs> okay. I think of all the kids' books out yeah. there. Yeah. Is your mama, mama a llama? llama. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, it's of a great time. one. Kind of a gloomy day out yeah. there today, right? I hope that video put a little smile on your face or other things that have happened today. <laughs> but I tell you what, though, highs today struggled to get up there. Temps this morning really didn't drop off all that much either. Around 19 degrees is our typical average low. We got down to about the low 30s in most locations. 33 in Decatur and in Springfield, 30 in Taylorville, along with Shelbyville, and 32 in Mattoon. Weather Almanac for this day. Can you believe it? Already the 22nd of January, 36 to 33. That's been arranged so far. We're right on target, though, for our average high. Stick around. I'll let you know when some rain and snow may pay us a visit after the break. With clouds in place, we're not seeing much in the way of precipitation. A couple of very fine little snow flurries every once in a while, but you can't really pick those up on live Doppler 3D Max. Our five live radars is all clear this evening. That's the way things will remain tonight, tomorrow, and even into the day on Saturday. But by Sunday, we'll start to see a chance for a little bit of a rain snow mix settling. And we'll talk more about that here in just a few seconds. Our Sarah Bush Lincoln Weatherbug Network camera in downtown Decatur showing a gloomy evening in the Sully City. We'll put the time lapse camera into motion from downtown, and you'll see that the fog that we saw early this morning was allowed to lift out, but we haven't been able to mix the moisture out in the lower levels of the atmosphere. That's because we have an inversion in place and that traps that moisture, doesn't allow it to escape. And that's another reason why it's been a cloudy and kind of gloomy day. Here's a look at Warrensburg Latham Elementary and Middle School. So we overlooked the football field there in northwestern Macon County, showing a lot of clouds this morning, a lot of fog as we woke up. The fog burned off for just a little while and Every once in a while we were trying to get a little peak of sunshine, but just never could materialize in the stratocumulus deck that we have in place. Just won't give up just yet. Here's a live look at our Provena Covenant Medical Center camera overlooking the U of I campus. We did have a couple of peaks of sunshine in Champaign. Watch the camera very closely. There it is right there for literally about 10 minutes and then clouds came right back in and not much wind this evening. As you can see the smoke rising straight up off of the smokestacks there on campus. So what's ahead for the rest of the evening and overnight tonight? We'll continue with the mostly cloudy sky until we get to about midnight. The clouds will start to erode out just a little bit. Sunshine returns tomorrow and on Saturday of the two days, though, tomorrow will be the sunniest of the two because by Saturday we'll expect to see a couple of clouds starting to drift back in and then a clipper system arrives on Sunday. Forecast models right now handling the situation and coming to a better agreement. It looks like the track will be a little bit farther to the northeast. And what does that mean for us? It means more rain than snow, and it also means warmer temperatures. So why so cloudy again today? Typically what happens here in the troposphere, it's warmer at the surface, and as you go up, it gets a little bit cooler. But every once in a while, we can have this reverse that creates what we call an inversion. It traps that moisture down closer to the surface. It condensates into those clouds, and that's the reason why today we just have not been able to break out of this cloud cover. You can see where the temps have warmed up a little bit this afternoon, but still no big push of cold air across the lower 48. 30 right now in Amarillo, where we've got a pretty good snowpack on the ground in North Texas. It's a very heavy Heavy snows developed last night along the I-40 corridor, and you can tell the warmest of the air, though, is in Orlando. It's still a little bit on the rainy side in the desert southwest this evening, keeping temps down in Phoenix in the low 60s. Our temps in mid-30s, pretty much area-wide. We haven't budged much today because of the clouds in place. Haven't got any good sunshine to help warm us up, but the system you see here to the south providing some fairly heavy rain across the Arkola, Texas, and stretching back into Mississippi will start to ride up the southern end of the Appalachians, go right up the eastern seaboard and that's going to bring some pretty good snows there. Our peerless precision cast calls for high pressure right over the top of us throughout the rest of the evening. Keeps us high and dry and by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning we'll wake up to a mix of sun and clouds. Mostly sunny into the afternoon. We'll pull this back out and watch the system start to lift up the east coast. Fairly heavy rains will be possible tomorrow then turning over to more of a snow event from basically uh, around the uh, New York City area through Philly, also into West Virginia and some fairly heavy snows in the Appalachians before that system pulls away and the Clipper system starts to drop in here Saturday night heading into Sunday. Your forecast from the Storm Center at WA and D clouds continue this evening, then otherwise partly cloudy after midnight. We drop down to 26 for the overnight low. 
29, a mix of sun and clouds in the morning. Grab the shades. We're up to 40 for the high before the sun goes to bed at around 504. Your St. Mary's Hospital seven day forecast. Low 40s on Saturday. A little rain snow mix possible on Sunday. It looks to be more rain now than snow. We'll cool it back down in the mid to upper 30s Monday through Wednesday. He's a snowboarder going for the gold in the Winter X Games. But this athlete has a unique history, how he's overcoming autism and trying to make his way to the podium next. It's a big week for a special snowboarder racing today in Aspen, Colorado with the Winter X Games. He's one of 10 athletes chosen to take part in the first ever Special Olympic snowboarding race. Benita Zahn shows us how the sport changed his life. Let's do it! One thing I love about snowboarding is the speed as you're going down the mountain. It makes me feel like a oh, one of a kind racer. It makes me the fastest snowboarder on the planet. Meet 19 year old Zachary Elder, the fearless. But if you'd met him a dozen years ago, you'd never believe he's the same person. Diagnosed at two with autism, he barely spoke. When he turned six, his folks signed him up for skiing lessons through Windham Mountains ASF, the Adaptive Sports Foundation. He wasn't very patient. Uh, he really didn't communicate all that much with us at all when he was six and he was skiing. I was young, I was shy, I was nervous at the same time, but now I felt like a pioneer. It's, I come a long way. And it was snowboarding that opened the road to change. One day when he was 10, he announced to everyone he wanted a snowboard, like his idol, two-time Olympic gold medalist, Sean White. His folks and coaches took him at his word. Before long, he joined a community of like-minded athletes, all participating in a cool sport, as Zachary describes it. He took to the sport like he was born to it and began racing with the ASF team, honing his skills and chatting up a storm. It paid off in ways no one could have imagined. On January 22nd, Zachary will be in Aspen, Colorado, one of 10 snowboarders racing in the first ever Special Olympic X Games event. He's the only participant invited from the East Coast. I never thought in my wildest dreams that I'd be standing on the side of a course watching him race. It, 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 I didn't think it was possible. Zachary's mom, Karen, says perseverance, patience, and trust in the coaches help them get to this day. Every moment is special because he's that kind of kid. Now I watch him and I listen to him talk to you and, and how he's become sort of a spokesperson both for himself and for snowboarding. It's just amazing. And as for Zachary, his game plan in Aspen is simple. Don't hold back. I am excited but nervous at the same time, but the one thing I want to go for is going straight for the gold medal. That is wow. great. Put your mind to something, you can do it. That's right. We'll be right back with another Tech Your Forecast. Paralyzed pups are getting a new leash on life thanks to some researchers helping them walk again. How it works and the amazing transformations. That's tonight at 5 after Jeopardy. How cute is that dog? It's really cute little tail going. Yeah. Okay. Happy. Let's talk about the weather. Okay. What it, do you want to talk about? It's dreary. <laughs> Just kidding. And we're probably not going to see sun for a little bit. Yeah, probably not till tomorrow. The sun's not going to peak out. We did get a little peak here or there for just a couple of minutes in East Central Illinois, but then the clouds came rolling right mm. back in. Mostly cloudy to cloudy skies this evening. Overnight tonight, the sky becomes partly cloudy. 29 degrees at midnight, 28 degrees by 2 o'clock in the morning. We'll see overnight lows finally settling out into the mid-20s. Plenty of sunshine by the afternoon tomorrow. Grab the shades, there 40 for the high, 42 on Saturday. More clouds than sun, but I still think a little bit of sunshine will pay us a visit. Then our attention turns to a clipper on Sunday. The way things look right now, more rain than anything. We're not expecting any snow accumulation with highs in the low 40s. We cool back a little bit Monday and a Tuesday, mid to upper 30s. And Wednesday and Thursday, not looking bad either with highs in the upper 30s to around 40. We've been pretty lucky this Boy, year. Yeah. This it's is been a bad January. I know. It's yeah. making me a little nervous for February, but yeah, yeah that's it right is what the corner, it is. Isn't it? Yeah. it is. Thanks. Maybe the groundhog will see a shadow. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you back here at five. <laughs> Good night.